monster, I'm a maven I know this world is changing Never gave in, never gave up I'm the only thing I'm afraid of Good morning everybody, it is Sunday And boy, I tell you what, it ain't, it ain't even 12 o'clock yet And I've done had one, one uh, exciting, busy, um, eventful morning you know that little place I was at last night? Well, I woke up. I had my alarm clock set. I got up at 8 o'clock. Uh, knocked the sleepy out of my eye. And look, was looking around. I just rolled my curtain back up. And I was like, well, hey, there ain't nobody here. There ain't nobody at this place. So I sat there for a minute. And I was like, uh, about, about 8.15. I said, all right, let's go see if I can get somebody to unload this thing. Jumped out the truck. Walked up, knocked on the door. It locked. Uh, there was a, a like a little glass window on, on one of the roll-up doors by the uh, docks there. All the lights were out. Nobody home. So, hold on a minute. So I walked around to the front side where the uh, where the office is. Uh, it's all glass. It's locked up. Ain't nobody home. All the lights out. Ain't nobody around. The only person there is me. So I thought, well, shit, this ain't no good. I'm supposed to be unloading this morning. This really ain't no good because I got to go down to Cuba. Yeah, I got to go. So I came back out and I looked on the paperwork and the address for the uh, this customer is 5.6 miles away. So I pulled it up on the map real quick and, you know, they've got a shipping and receiving at that place as well. So I called up the broker and said, hey, you know, I'm down here. There's nobody here. Uh, could I be at the wrong place? They've got another building. This seems, seems to just be a warehouse. They've got another building five miles down the road. And the girl that answered the phone, she said, well, she said, I'll relay the message on to, this, to the, the broker on this account. My first thought was, you know, it's Sunday. I ain't hearing nothing. I said, well, I said, you think it'd be uh, beneficial just go down to the main office or whatever, the other building. She said, well, she said, that's up to you. You can if you want. I said, all right, thank you for your time, hon. Have a good Sunday. We'll, we'll, we'll I get off here and leave you alone. So I went down there to the next building, uh, found my way to the shipping office, and they said, oh, that's, we unload that stuff at the warehouse. Hold on, let me make a phone call. I said, well, I was just at the warehouse. Well, since last night. I said, there's nobody there. The only person that was there was me. He said, all right, let me make a phone call. He called somebody. He said, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, cool, sounds good. Looks at me, he said, hey, bro, we're going to unload you here. We normally unload you over there, but we've got room here, so we're going to go ahead and offload you here. Just go around the dock one and stamp the paperwork. He said, give, give this to the uh, the lady around there at dock one, walk in, she'll take care of you, sign you, get you on the road. Sweet. So I went out there. And I thought, all right, this is a perfect opportunity. I'm going to air my tire up because I still ain't got it fixed. I can't find a shop. Matter of fact, I'm on my way now to the Bossman shop at the Flying J down on 44, I think on exit 226. So I thought, all right, this is a cool time. I'm going to air this tire up. And it was about 55 pounds, so I aired, I aired it back up. I got done airing the tire up. And you remember last night when I parked, right? There was a backed up in the trailer area where they dropped trailers and stuff. And I back, ooh, backed all the way up until I hit the curb. And as soon as I hit the curb, it's boom. I was like, damn, that don't feel like no normal curb. Anyway, the curb was about that tall. It wasn't, you know, your little standard curb. And so, didn't think nothing of it. This morning pre-trip, and I walked back. I was like, oh, crap. I didn't. By hitting that curb, it got into the mud flap, got into the tire, and ripped it from the bracket. Didn't mess the bracket up. It just messed the mud flap up. So I thought, shit. That's a good time to fix that as well. So I grabbed my tools, half inch socket, half inch wrench, went back there and I was sitting there just loosening up the mud flap. Uh, some of the tabs, it, it stretched them. So I grabbed my, my side cutters, I snipped them off, fit it back up in there. I mean, it's not really great, but it, I mean, it looks good. It just, it just don't have the holes in the uh, mud flap. So it's just tightened it together. I thought, sweet. That'll get me down here to the truck stop when I get me some more mud flaps. 
At about that time, I'm feeling good about myself working on my truck, getting things going, right? Out of my peripheral, I notice I'm looking at a tire or tires on the passenger side with no mud flap. So here I am feeling good about fixing my stuff, and I just notice and happen to notice I don't have a mud flap on my passenger side. This is all on the trailer now. No mud flap. I was like, hot dog. Whoa. Here I am feeling good. I was like, all right, well, maybe I can I can uh, get on down to the truck stop without getting pulled over, <laughs> without having a mud flap. But anyway, got out of there. I went down the road, and right here on 70, around this uh, O'Fallon, uh, St. Charles area, there's a, there's a quick trip. I like stopping that quick trip. They got good air hoses and got good fuel. So I was like, all right, let's top this tank off and get it ready for tomorrow's run. And I'm gonna go around the whole truck because it's Sunday. I ain't got, I ain't got no job. I ain't got nothing to do. So I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna get all the air and all my tires situated because the temperatures are dropping, guys. So be sure to check the air pressures on your tires uh, as the uh, the colder climate set in because you will lose uh, pressure because the uh, the ambient temps and stuff. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna air up all the tires around the trailer. And they hadn't dropped but about three or four pounds off average. So it ain't, they hadn't dropped that much. But nonetheless, I had both steers up to 115 because I've got 24.5, so the minimum is 105 cold. I had 10 pounds of that, so I put them all on one, put the steers on 115. And the remaining, well, the, the other the other 16, I put them all on 100 and uh, 203. It's just between 105 and 100. So, filled up topped off the tanks aired up all the tires and got done with that and I thought shit I need to, I need to dag him start running and jogging more often man I'm, it's, it's, I'm out of shape it's about killing me so I went in the truck stop I went and threw a piss grabbed some sodas um, grabbed a coffee and I'm waiting on it to cool off man I can't wait to dig into this right here uh -huh, I can't wait to dig into it I ain't had no, whoa, shit, sorry. I ain't had no real coffee in a minute. Well, besides being at home. 44 Wentzworth West. Hold on just a minute, guys. Sorry about that, guys. I had to, I had to just pull up the GPS or my map real quick because I thought I was about to miss my turn. I didn't. I'm good. But uh, anyway, I got, got my coffee, and I went in there, and I was like, all right, I want some breakfast. They, they usually have some good little breakfast food, little snacks, and I got me a, uh, a sausage biscuit, two packs of mustard, and bacon, egg, and cheese burrito, breakfast burrito. I was like, oh, shit, let's try that. I ain't had one of them in a while. They're usually pretty good. So, came out back out of the truck, ate my breakfast, looked down at my coffee. I thought, shit, I'm ready to go. I got a long day ahead of me. I got 80 miles to my pickup. So I'm gonna go down here to this Bossman truck shop down here at the 226 Flying J. Get this tire fixed and pick up some mud flaps. And then I'm gonna kick back and relax. And uh, I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. Anyway, come back in a little bit. See you back. Yes. Yes, I found a shop that's open, even on a Sunday. Even on a Sunday, I got a shop that's open. And I like this shop. This is my favorite shop. You got two pretty little ladies in there working. So I found a shop with two pretty ladies working. Well, working the, the desk in there anyway. But yes, 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 yes. She said, nose up to the door, bay three. They come get you when they're ready. So, so uh, yeah, I went ahead and bought two mud flaps. They'll get me by until I find the mud flaps I want. I'm gonna buy the, uh, I don't know what, I, I, I'll let you know when I do it. But yeah, I just got two uh, boss shops. Balsaman, Boss Shop, Mud Flaps, they're like $12 a piece, so I was like, cool, give me two of them. But uh, I will install them, because I ain't giving you $26. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, we are getting the tire patched. 
Thank God. Well, out of one bay and into another, this right here is just more pleasurable bay. Uh, I figured, hell, I'm in the in the the, the, the mood to spend money. <laughs> I might as well get a truck wash as well. I'm going back to Virginia, and I know I'm gonna run through rain, but every time I check the weather, it says it's rain. That's why I ain't washed the truck in the last couple weeks. It's rain, rain, rain. At this point. I'll wash the truck and get her all cleaned up. I can hit probably 10 rainstorms and still be cleaner than I am now. So, with that being said, we're going to get her washed. So, I'm down here in uh, Cuba, Missouri, here at the, uh, what is this place? Midwest Travel Plaza, exit 208. Uh, Dottie's Restaurant inside. Checked out the reviews, man. I'll tell you what, not a single bad review. I'm eating at Dottie's tonight. I'm thinking about steak, salad. Yep, sounds good. Steak and salad. And, uh, yeah, that's where I'm eating. Anyway, if you're coming through down 44, you got to stop at 208. Check this place out. It's nice. And where I parked that, I backed in, and there's a uh, blue beacon right in the, in the back of the parking lot. And I thought, well, hell, there ain't nobody in line except that RV, and he's pulling in. So I fired up, wheeled around here. Figured, well, oh, hell, let's clean her up, and then go back over and park, and then go get some steak, get have a steak and salad, and probably some some tots. I don't know. It's just, ugh. I ain't made it there yet. I might just change my mind and get something else. But anyway, it's long overdue. I got to wash this old dirty girl. She's a dirty girl again. Get her all clean and spiffed up. But let me tell you guys, I read the reviews on that boss shop before I got there, and some old truck driver claimed that the manager, Josh, was yelling at him and screaming at him to get out of his shop and wanted to fight and blah, blah, blah. And I just thought automatically disgruntled trucker, you know. A lot of truck drivers need to, uh, I think a lot of them keep skirts in their sleeper. A lot of them, you know, you know the drill. They're awful, uh, yeah. But anyway, I didn't say nothing about it. I said, hell, I need a tire patch. I wheeled in. And lo and behold, the store manager, a guy named Roger, super friendly, started talking to him about tires, getting hit, getting a rundown on tires. And uh, I think I'm about to make another video and upload it here pretty soon about get your guys' opinion on that. So you may watch it before or after this. But anyway... Um, went over the pros and cons of a lot of tires and his opinion. He's been there, I think he said 12 years, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, got a lot of good advice from him. Super helpful guy. He's a store manager. He's a, he, you know, number one, number one chief in charge. Super cool guy. Uh, the two ladies is running in the office. Uh, I didn't get their names. Uh, Ashton. I remember her saying that she answered the phone. Her, her name is Ashton cute little old girl i'll tell you what she's pretty as a pretty as a picture girl she I, that was working with her i think she may have been training her because she was showing some things to her well she is cute as a picture too uh black hair big old bright blue eyes i mean that's my weakness that's my weakness anyway super cool friendly ladies in the front nice and the guy patched my tire well that was josh you know the the one about the review anyway Josh is a cool guy, man. I didn't say nothing about nothing about the review. And uh, super cool guy. We sit back, you know, just chopped it up, talking about everything under the sun. And and uh, and then he brought up something about, be sure to leave me a review. And then I remembered, because I done forgot at, the time, at this time, I done forgot about the reviews. I mean, I, my mind was elsewhere. I was worried about getting my truck fixed and getting some new mud flaps. And... Uh, I said, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I said, I read that review. I said, come at me, bro. You want to fight? He laughed out loud. He said, man, let me tell you what happened on that. He said, the other mechanic in there, he said, this truck, big old truck driver, or this truck driver was trying to, was picking on this little 18-year-old kid, getting in his face, yelling and screaming. And he said, yeah, I just told him to get, get the hell out of my shop. He said, he writes this nice little review about me. He said, be sure to leave me a good review. I said, yeah. I said, I am. You be looking. But anyway, cool ass uh, ball shop. Exit 226, Interstate 44 here in Missouri. Man, that's a good ball shop. I mean, everybody there was 
was just cool. And uh, anyway, I left them a review on Trucker Path, and I figured I'd throw them in here as well. Uh, there, I saved them on my favorites. Um, I might just go back there and buy my tires. I don't know if I can get back up this way. But anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut off here. i come back to you here at the nightcap. I just figured I'd get a little bit, let you know how the day's going. And, uh, oh, went by Walmart, too, and uh, stocked up on my groceries. And the girls at the, over at the ball shop was telling me there's a bar behind the Walmart. You can park at the Walmart, and there's a bar behind the Walmart. Great food. The wings are to die for. And I figured it's best option. I better not go to the bar. So I came on down here to Cuba. Uh, I think I'm three miles away from my pickup in the morning. I figure if I go to the bar, I might not make the pickup to Mark him in. <laughs> so if you're in around the ball shop, exit 226, well in the Walmart, park there, walk behind the Walmart. There's a bar back there. Supposed to have killer food and uh, good drinks and everybody's friendly staff. And Anyways, guys, we'll come back at you here in a little bit. See you. Bye. All right, fellas, let's put this old dog to sleep. Coming at you with a little nightcap. I have uh, I did go in there and get me a steak and salad and some fries. And uh, eh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I probably won't get the steak again. It was about maybe that thick. I've had better. But it was better than what you normally get at like a at a Petro or a skillet or iron skillet or something like that. It's a pretty decent steak, but, you know, I've got fresh farm-raised beef in the freezer at home, so it's kind of hard to compete with that. So when I order a T-bone out somewhere, it needs to be a steakhouse because what I got back home is top quality uh, farm-raised stuff that we, uh, that we slaughtered. But anyway, it was all right. It was all right. Salad was real good. Fries, eh, I didn't really like the fries. It's kind of like the... Uh, the fries that you get from uh, Checkers. And I'm not really a big fan on those fries. I like, if you get steak, you need some steak fries. But looking over the rest of the food, they got a, a buffet in there. And man, that, that, I, I'm not real big on buffets. And it looked really good. And about 75% of the people in there, it's not even truck drivers. It's people from around the area, the locals. So Dottie's. I will be back, but I won't get a steak. Well, I might. It was it was juicy, or not juicy. It had good flavor, and uh, it's pretty tender. It was all right. It just wasn't thick enough. But uh, yeah, we're about to shut down, and it is currently ten o'clock, so it's bed thirty. Bed thirty. I'm behind. I need to get my butt to sleep. Get up about eight o'clock in the morning. Get rolling. So we're gonna come at you here, here soon in the morning. Well, maybe in the morning. I might not start rolling the film or the camera until about 12. I don't know. I might not even record anything tomorrow. I don't know. We'll let it be a mystery. Anyways, guys, catch you then. Talk to you then. See you. Bye.